Welcome to today's lecture on embryology and the fascinating world of lung development. Throughout this session, we will explore the intricate processes involved in the formation and maturation of the lungs, from their initial stages to postnatal development. Join me as we delve into the complex world of embryogenesis and uncover the remarkable journey of the respiratory system's development. During the fourth week of gestation, a small evagination emerges from the ventral wall of the foregut endoderm. This evagination, known as the respiratory diverticulum, is the primary landmark of lung development. It forms as a result of signaling interactions between the endoderm and the surrounding mesoderm. As the respiratory diverticulum elongates, it invaginates into the surrounding mesenchyme and undergoes subsequent subdivisions, eventually forming the two main bronchial buds. These buds will give rise to the future right and left primary bronchi, which will continue to branch extensively throughout the subsequent stages of lung development. The process of lung branching, or morphogenesis, involves the regulated and intricate formation of the bronchial tree. Signaling molecules like FGF and FGFR2 play important roles in promoting branching through epithelial cell proliferation and elongation. This process occurs throughout embryonic and fetal stages, ultimately giving rise to bronchi, bronchioles, and terminal bronchioles. As lung development progresses, a distinction arises between the conducting airways and the respiratory units responsible for gas exchange. The trachea and main bronchi, derived from the primary bronchial buds, constitute the conducting airways. The bronchi further branch and divide into smaller bronchioles, forming a complex system that conducts air to the respiratory zone. On the other hand, the respiratory zone is involved in the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. It emerges from the terminal bronchioles and contains structures such as respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveoli. These specialized structures form the foundation for efficient gas exchange. At this stage, the lungs are still in their early development and resemble glandular structures. The airways grow and branch out, forming the bronchial tree. However, the lungs are not yet mature enough to support gas exchange. Important structures like cartilage, smooth muscles, and blood vessels start to differentiate during this phase and set the foundation for later stages of lung development. Throughout the canaliculus and terminal sac periods, the lung undergoes extensive remodeling, leading to the formation of more mature structures. Bronchi continue to divide, forming narrower bronchioles and primitive alveolar ducts. Within these ducts, terminal sacs develop, and a thin respiratory epithelial lining forms. This lining plays a vital role in gas exchange after birth. The development of the lungs involves the simultaneous growth and differentiation of the pulmonary vasculature. Blood vessels enter the lungs alongside the bronchi, branching to form an extensive network connected to the alveoli. Signaling molecules like VEGF guide this process for efficient gas exchange. Lung fluid, primarily composed of secretion from the developing respiratory epithelium and fetal urine, plays a vital role in lung development during the fetal period. The fluid serves multiple purposes, including providing essential nutrients and growth factors to the developing lungs, maintaining the shape and expansion of the airways, and facilitating the movement of various components within the lung. As the fetus approaches term, the lung fluid composition changes, with a decrease in the secretion of lung fluid and an increase in its clearance. This shift prepares the lungs for expanded air filling and the onset of independent breathing after birth. During the canalicular period, from week 16 to 26 of pregnancy, the primitive alveolar ducts transform into mature alveoli. This involves the thinning of the respiratory epithelial lining, proliferation of pneumocytes, and production of surfactant, resulting in the formation of millions of functional alveoli. Surfactant, produced by type 2 pneumocytes, reduces surface tension in the alveoli, preventing collapse during expiration. Its synthesis increases during lung development, ensuring proper expansion and preventing respiratory distress syndrome in premature infants. After birth, the lungs undergo further maturation as the respiratory epithelium experiences cellular and functional changes. Type 2 pneumocytes mature and produce surfactant, reducing surface tension and preventing alveolar collapse. The capillary network surrounding the alveoli matures, allowing for efficient gas exchange. This shift from placental to pulmonary gas exchange is crucial for the newborn's survival outside the womb, as it ensures the delivery of oxygen to the body's tissues and the removal of carbon dioxide waste. The ongoing development and remodeling of the lungs after birth involve morphological and physiological changes that shape the lung structure throughout childhood and adulthood. Lung growth primarily occurs through the proliferation and differentiation of existing cells, regulated by genetics, environment, and hormones. Tissue remodeling involves changes in alveoli distribution and the development of a complex capillary network, adapting the lungs' function to meet breathing and oxygen exchange demands. In conclusion, the development of the lungs is an intricately regulated process that forms the basis for understanding respiratory disorders. 
Further research and exploration in this field hold great potential for advancing medical knowledge and treatments. Thank you for joining me on this journey.